Hey guys, recently managed to get my hands on this uh, Apple branded uh, USB charger, it's a UK version with a uh, part number of A1399. Now, I'm not sure if this is genuine or not, um, I'm not up with the latest in determining whether it's genuine from the markings and that sort of thing, but I thought we'll have a look and see what we find for ourselves. So I've got a, um, an adapter here, it goes from a, a C13 or whatever plug. C14 to uh, a few various different types so we can plug that in get our 100 volts coming in and then I've got this voltage and uh, current little tester and I've got my um, load here so I thought we'll plug it in see what sort of output we get how much power we get compared to the uh, nameplate and I've put these two wires here on and we're gonna hook this up to the scope and see what the actual output waveform looks like see if it's nice and smooth or if it's all noisy and all over the place once we've done that We'll pull this thing open, see exactly what's inside. So, first of all, the nameplate here tells me that it's designed by Apple in California. Model number A1399, uh, made in China. Its input is 100 volts to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz at 0.15 amp, and its output is 5 volts at 1 amp. Um, and it says uh, Emerson Network Power, it's got various uh, CE marks and uh, different safety marks and that sort of thing. The C mark does look like it's a proper C mark, not the, the China export where the C and the E are kind of closer together. It's, it does look like a, a reasonably proportioned uh, CE mark. So, well first of all, let's get this thing plugged in. So we've got 5.1 volts there, so that's not a bad voltage, no load. Alright, so if I plug this in, and I'll wind this up, Let's see how high we actually get before it collapses. So what we'll see is, well, we should get at least one amp, maybe a little bit more. And as we go further, the output voltage will suddenly drop, and that's where the uh, the power supply can't keep up, and it just basically collapses in on itself. So we're just at one amp there. So that's its rated voltage and rated current. So that's not too bad. We got five volts at one amp. So we'll go a little bit further. 1.1 amp one point two amp you can see the voltage is starting to drop down there yeah there we go it's dead so if we come back it should recover so basically one point two amp so we are getting the rated output so that's not too bad all right, now, so I'll hook up the uh, the scope, and I'll be back in a sec, and we'll see what the output waveform is looking like on this thing. All right, so I got my scope hooked up down here. I actually changed to a resistive uh, load here because I didn't want the um, the switching of this to impact the results. This transistor turned on and off very quickly, and it can put a uh, uneven load on the uh, the power supply, which evens out, but the scope will pick up any switching this is causing but a resistive load is just purely linear and that will give us more accurate reading of what this is doing without getting interfered by our load so I've set this to the 1 amp setting this does 1 and 2 amp so we got 5 volts exactly at 0.96 amp so that's pretty much close to the uh, the rated output of this thing so this is a, a captured waveform of what's coming out this is what's superimposed on top of the 5 volt uh, coming out of this uh, power supply We've got a 6 millivolt uh, ripple, which isn't that much. That's maybe 0 0.006 volt. It's very small. And those little spikes, that's, that'll be you know, transistor switching and that sort of thing. Um, the peak to peak is 58 millivolts, which is 0 0.06 volts. So it's actually not too bad. Um, the power supply is getting a little bit warm. It's been on for a little while as I've been adjusting the settings on my scope but it's not overly hot. So the um, the specs aren't looking too bad. We got looks like we've got a switching frequency of about 350, 360 kilohertz there. Um, the higher the frequency, the more efficient transformers can work, so that you can have smaller transformers. That's how they make these power supplies so small. So the output's not looking too bad. Um, it looks very big on the screen there, of course, because I've zoomed right in, but um, yeah, it's it's six millivolts of ripple that's that's not much at all 
Alright, so after some cutting and twisting later, I managed to get the case off. I also noticed in the end we've got a serial number, which seems to be an Apple thing. Um, that's looking pretty good for this thing being genuine, but the biggest indicator was when I opened it up, it's actually looking really good inside. Now, we've got two pins here. They're our mains input, and they locate just here and just up here. That's our two input terminals. You can see on the back here with the earth pin, it's got an exposed section here, but that doesn't actually locate to anything. It just sits around here with just some like mylar or some plastic insulating tape. Now, it's a standard switch mode power supply. We've got all our jelly bean parts on the back. On this side here, we've got what looks like to be a little inductor. That'll be stopping the noise getting back out into the mains. Then over here, we've got our... Uh, I guess that's a fuse of some description. It, it'll look, probably be just like a wire wound um, fuse or something. It looks like a resistor, but it'll be. I can't see the rating, but it's probably written on the other side. Then this little thing here in this plastic former, this is actually a common mode choke. This is also for a uh, noise reduction um, coming in and going out. But see how it's in this plastic former? That's to provide isolation, voltage isolation. So if any surge transients come through or anything happens, it's going to be contained in that little plastic case and it won't actually short across to anything else. So that's pretty cool. We've also got our, um, our capacity here inside this white like plastic. That's to provide isolation as well. So in case you get an over voltage condition and the inside of the capacitor shorts to the case, because the case is like this one here is metal, it's aluminium, um, that plastic wrap will stop that mains voltage leaking out or shorting out from the case to anything else inside. So that's a nice attention to detail there as well. Now there'll be a uh, a bridge rectifier somewhere in here, but it's all so small it's kind of hard to see. It's probably underneath underneath in here somewhere. But the next in the line seems to be our transistor here. That's our main switching transistor. And then that feeds over to our transformer, which is inside this box. So it's all inside plastic molding everywhere just to provide that proper isolation. Now, coming around, we've got our feedback uh, capacitor here. That's going to be an X-class rated cap designed to fail open circuit if it does fail, so you don't get any high voltage shorting across to the low voltage side. And then we've got our smoothing capacitor here, another little inductor for uh, noise reduction. Our opto-isolator, that's that little black thing right down inside there. That's giving our uh, voltage feedback. See. We've got two resistors here. This is a, a voltage divider. And this in conjunction with the, uh, the opto isolator. And there'll be a little voltage, uh, like a voltage reference somewhere, maybe 2.5 volt voltage reference. What it does is this voltage divider will divide down so that at 5 volts coming out, it gives a, uh, a certain voltage. We'll say 2.5 volts. That seems to be a common voltage. The, that is then compared against the 2.5 volts of our uh, reference voltage, it's like a little three terminal device, like a voltage regulator, um, and if it varies, our opto isolator will then feed that signal back to our, through the, uh, the main controller chip, which is probably hidden away as well, which will then drive that transistor over here more or less to raise or lower our um, output voltage as required. And if we change these two resistors here, we can actually adjust our output voltage. We can make it higher or lower as a standard voltage. So we could turn this into a 6 or 10 volt or maybe 3 volt power supply just by changing those two little resistors there to alter that measured voltage compared to the, that 2.5 volt reference. Then after there, it's coming through to our USB port. Now you see all this white plastic. This is another pretty nice attention to detail for our isolation. You see that there's this barrier here, this like L shape. That's actually going through the PCB from back here. So instead of just having creepage distance, like the physical space between the high voltage and low voltage side, they've put cuts. And you see, often see this. You see cuts in the circuit board to give an air gap. They've gone one up on, above an air gap and put a physical insulating barrier. And it's all the way around, all the way around here like this. Because you can see it's coming all the way up around this sort of shape. And that way, even though our high voltage, our mains voltage all around here, is in such close proximity to our uh, USB port, 
there's no way it can get through because it has to punch through, in the case of this uh, capacitor, it's got to punch through the wrap on the capacitor, it's then got to punch through the plastic and arc across all the way through to get to our USB ports. So that's basically never going to happen. That's how they can make this so compact but still retain safety. So I'm going to say that this thing is most definitely genuine and um, yeah that's what we can see inside a very well designed and well implemented small switch mode power supply. Another little detail here you can see these cutouts for the, our, uh, our capacitors that's just so that they'll fit they can sit just that couple millimeters lower so you see everything's flat along the top so I just sit those down inside those gaps but yeah not a not a bad piece of kit this one alright guys I hope you found that interesting seeing inside a, a nicely designed design in California USB power supply alright guys we'll see you next time